Krishna. Thank you so much to all the devotees there at uh, Tampa for your very warm uh, and loving welcome. I'm very happy to be back again in your yatra. I think it's long time last time I was here the same time of the year last year. And I hope you had had a great um, new year celebration. I just came back from Tirupati Dham Yatra and um, I was just thinking maybe I should have this class uh, taking you all on a virtual yatra to Tirupati uh, but somehow um, I just came day before yesterday and yesterday we were very busy we had a wonderful wonderful uh, new year celebration at the temple with drama and other cultural programs and a big get together with lots of new people getting introduced to Krishna consciousness and I couldn't put up a PPT together so then I thought maybe some other day because um, virtual yatra means you really need to have some pictures and videos was, uh, so I'm still in that um, that mood of uh, Balaji Yatra because I've been to Tirupati a couple of times before also but it was always very brief and maybe just landing, have Balaji Darshan and push off. Uh, this time I was there for three whole days and we went to a number of places and visited a number of uh, uh, places connected to different devotees and their pastimes and it was a very wonderful, wonderful yatra. So, however, I um, thought maybe we'll just take up a bhajan by uh, Govinda Das uh, Kaviraj. It's one of my favorite bhajan and I think one of the most popular bhajans in ISKCON. So, what we'll do today is uh, we'll sing that bhajan and then try to go line by line and, um, you know, meditate on that bhajan and try to take home some lessons which we can implement in this coming 2022 uh, year. So it's a short bhajan. So what I'll simply do is first I'll recite all the four uh, stanzas. I'll sing them and then we'll go one by one line to line and then try to go deep into that. So <clears throat> you can put this up on the screen if you like. Bhaja hure mana. And then we will... <clears throat> Go deep into it. So, Shala Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Parampara ki jai, Iskon Vartaman Guru Vrinda ki jai, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Guru Maharaj ki jai, and all glories to the assembled Vaishnavas. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Bhaja Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nanda Na Abhaya Charanara Vindare Bhaja Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanara Vindare Dullabha Manava Jana Masat Sange Tarohe Bhava Sindhure Bhaja Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanara Vindare Sita Yatapa Bata Barishana Edina Jamini Jagire Sita Yatapa Bata Barishana Edina Jamini Jagire Vifale Sevino Kripana Durajana Vifale Sevino Kripana Durajana Chapala Sukhalaba Lagire Chapala Sukhalaba Lagire Edhana Yopana Putra Parijana Iteke Ache Paranti Tire Kamala Dalla Jala Jivana Talamala Kamala Dala jala jivana tala mala bhaja hu hari pada niti re bhaja hu 
ಹರಿಪಾದ ನೀತಿರೇ ಶ್ರವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಸ್ಮರಣ ವಂದನ ಪಾದ ಸೇವನ ಪೂಜನ ಸಖಿ ಜನ ಆತ್ಮ ನಿವೇದನ ಪೂಜನ ಸಖಿ ಜನ ಆತ್ಮ ನಿವೇದನ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದಾಸಾಭಿ ಲಾಶರೆ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದಾಸಾಭಿ ಲಾಶರೆ ಭಜ ಹುರೇ ಮನ ಶ್ರೀನಂದನಂದನ ಅಭಯ ಚರಣಾರ ವೃಂದರೆ ಅಭಯ ಚರಣಾರ ವೃಂದರೆ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಭಜನ್ ಭಜ ಹೂ ರೇ ಮನ ಗೋವಿಂದ ದಾಸ್ ಕವಿರಾಜ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ Shri Nanda Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Now this is so weird. Somebody talking to their mind. I mean we talk to people. Who talks to mind? But we see all the Vaishnava Acharyas and their different bhajans and all. They are always talking to their mind. We see even Arjun. He is talking about mind. Oh Krishna, my mind is Chanchala. How do I control Chanchala, Himana, Krishna? We see even Krishna talking about mind. in the in the bhagavad gita at several places he says give me your mind in the ninth chapter of the bhagavad gita verse number 34 krishna says man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mam evaishya yukta vaivam atma nam mad parayana give me your mind your mind should be my parayan now this is something really special why is everybody so much talking about mind 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 krishna is talking about mind devotees are talking about mind why is this mind so important because the whole point is it's the only thing that's keeping us away from krishna or it's the only thing that can connect us to krishna so we may say but why do you talk to mind is it not inside us is it not us no it's inside us but it's separate from us everything that is inside us may not be us so mind is inside us but we are not the mind mind is separate so that's we have a gross body which is made up of earth water fire air and ether and then we have a subtle body made up of mind ego and intelligence and it's not us because we are the pure soul part and parcel of krishna and these are the layers upon us the mind ego and intelligence is a layer upon our soul so it's not us so that's why we are trying to convince it because the problem is the gross body we can leave it here and go but this subtle body of mind ego and intelligence there's no there's no exchange policy we have to stick with it at least we can have new bodies every time we take birth but mind ego and intelligence is the same carried forward from uh, millions of lifetime so we really need to work on it because it's our constant companion till we go back home back to god it's going to stick with us so we really need to work on it and cure it and make it our friend and make it you know make it in such a way that we help us to connect to krishna so the whole play the key player in this whole game is mind if the mind is regulated and if the mind is convinced and connected to krishna then the whole problem sorted sorted out because there is krishna and here we are and what is separating us from krishna is the mind if we can regulate our mind and the mind connects us to krishna we go back home back to god and the whole story is over so that's why everybody is talking about mind and around the world people have um different ideas about mind the many scientists and different thinkers they talk about mind and some people don't want to talk about mind because they think there's one particular scientist he says i don't want to talk about mind and i don't want to study mind because it doesn't have any locus standi where is the mind who has seen the mind because mind is not some gross object which you can see feel touch you can you can't do anything you know you can't touch it or you can't see the mind so but anyway whether you study the mind or you don't study the mind the mind is always studying you and it's trying to find out your weak points and then it attacks you so it's very important that we understand the mind we regulate the mind we connect the mind to krishna 
because there are so many temptations out there in this world. We, see, as devotees, we're always talking about two things. We're talking about Krishna and how Maya is disturbing us. Now, this disturbance of Maya can be overcome only if mind is our friend. Otherwise, we are in big trouble. But there are so many temptations in the outside world. And we can't do anything about it. We are helpless because they're all external. And we can't make any changes in our outside world or culture. The only thing we can do is if we can regulate our mind. Uh, there are so many temptations. Temptations may come, but we should not welcome those temptations. And that is possible only if our mind is in, a, in under our control. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 16.16, he says, Aneka chitta vibhranta, aneka chitta vibhranta moha jala samavrita. Our consciousness is constantly pulled in different directions, you know, and it's it's not only pulling us in different directions, it's pulling us down, you know, down towards hell. Who can help us? It's only if we can somehow control our mind and we can connect it to Krishna. Otherwise, we are uh, duped. See, the, the kind of temptations that we face in the outside world, to a certain extent, we can decrease our encounters with those temptations in our day-to-day -day life. But it still boils down to our own res responsibility of controlling our mind. I was just um, going through this one uh, <clears throat> study that this uh, Google made. The Google office, the Google head office, they made one study they have this canteen in their office for the staff who work there and what they observe is they has this they have these um, sweets and goodies which are full of sugar in transparent containers and every time somebody walks in canteen because they are looking at those sweets and goodies they are tempted to eat them so after some time what they did is they changed those containers from transparent to translucent now they were not you cannot see them but they are still available you can go and ask in the counter and they will give you but you cannot see them and uh, to their uh, amazement within a few months the intake of those sweets became half because now people were not able to see them, so they were not attracted. It's like out of sight, out of mind. But only those, of course, you can, you know, even if it's out of sight, it's not always out of mind. Sometimes it's very much inside the mind and we may try go searching for it. So unless until somebody is actually asking for it, no, I want this particular cookie, but it's not very clearly seen or it's not, you know, uh, attracting you because it's not there anymore in those transparent containers. So over the period of time, the intake uh, reduced and people became very healthy. So in this world, if we try not to expose ourselves to those temptations, to a certain extent, we can have self-control and we can, you know, reduce uh, desires in our life. But it's not always feasible because you cannot cover those hoardings. You cannot cover the televisions. There are so many YouTube channels. There is because we are living in a social circle, and so many things is happening around us. So definitely, we'll be exposed. So we cannot expect any change outside. Only thing that we can do is somehow we can control our mind. And um, this controlling of our mind or vaccination of our mind or immunization of our mind is done only if we have a proper purpose. I want to give you an example here from the Ramayan. In Ramayan, the king, Sugriva, the monkey king, he faced temptations in his life on two occasions. One time when Vali was killed by Lord Ram and then Sugriva was handed over the kingdom and for the four months that he was there, Chaturmas, he got completely intoxicated and indulging himself in sense gratification because he had been deprived for so many years living somewhere in the jungle and suddenly he is here as a king in the royal palace and so many temptations around him and he just um, 
gave in and he started enjoying and he completely forgot about uh, you know uh, serving lord ram though he was reminded by hanuman and then he was reminded by tara he was reminded by lakshman but he just gave in the temptation so he got completely drowned and the second time he faced temptation was uh, when they crossed the ocean at that time uh, ravana he sent his messengers to sugreev he said look i'll give you lot of wealth leave this ram alone these two brothers i'll manage them you take your army and go back walk back and i'll give you all the money and all the wealth and all the support you require but this time though temptation is readily available but sugreev he does not give in to temptation he just holds the neck of those messengers you know and takes drags them to lord ram and tells him hey these people have come to you know with a proposal to me and he beats them up now somebody may ask but last time he got tempted why this time he was so strong he did not you know um give in for temptation because this time he has a purpose last time there was no purpose he's happy he got uh, all the temptations in front of him so many um, avenues to indulge in sense gratification there's nobody around him and he was enjoying but this time he's in association of devotees and then he's connected to the lord and then he has a specific purpose oh, we are all here and there is our army and we are going to reclaim mother sita and he has a purpose and purpose gives us determination to overcome the temptation so that is why govinda das kaviraj says oh my dear mind bhaja ho re man get connected to krishna if you don't get connected to krishna you will give trouble to me because you will drag me to maya and then again that will separate me permanently from my lord so oh my dear lord oh my dear mind kindly get connected to krishna so this purpose in our life comes only when we read scriptures and then we associate with devotees then our purpose becomes strong and when the purpose is strong uh, then we have determination to say no to temptation so he says bhaja ho re mana oh my dear mind shri nanda nanda na get connected to the uh, son of nanda maharaj so the mind may ask oh very well what do i get out of it the next line he says abhaya charanara vrindare abhaya charanara vrindare oh you will get abhaya you will become fearless we have so many fears in this world fear of health fear of finances fear of relationships but when you connect to the lord it's not the problem that problems will go away but we get the capacity to face them when we stand in front of a big building the building is so huge we can't do anything about it but when we are in a helicopter and we see the building from top the building becomes very small that means when we connect to the higher then all these things become very small in front of us so the problem still stay but then we have now a better perspective to look at it because now we are connected to the lord we get the strength to face them now our temple here in vishakhapatnam is next to zoo you know there's a a zoo here a zoo park animal park and many a times i bring my school children here to see the yeah, animals in the zoo and you should see their confidence especially when they are in front of the tiger's cage or the lion's cage and the lion is roaring and the children roar back and why is this all confidence coming because behind the teacher is holding the hand and they are so confident my teacher is with me i don't have to worry alone they may feel fear but because they are holding the hand they have all the confidence when we are connected to the lord fearlessness because we know he is our well wisher and he is there for us so bhaja ho re mana shri nanda nanda my dear mind worship the son of nanda maharaj then what will happen you will become abhaya you will become fearless why should i do that because this human birth is very rare says govinda das kaviraj in the next line durlabha manava janama oh this human birth is very rare and this is the only opportunity this is the only time that you can connect to nanda maharaj son you can't get connected in different other species uh, so durlabha manava somebody may say oh really is it so rare to get a human birth uh, we don't think so there's so much population of india and there's so much population of china and the people around the world and 
in fact the lions and the tigers are becoming ex- are becoming extinct we need to protect them but where is durlabha manava janma there are millions and billions of people around the world it's crowded and overpopulated but the scriptures say that there are 84 lakh species in the, among 84 lakh species there are 9 lakh species of aquatics there are 10 lakh species of uh, birds 11 lakh species of insects 20 lakh species of trees 30 lakh species of animals but as far as human beings only 4 lakh species and among the human beings also you know there are two varieties there are the aryans and the non aryans aryans are the civilized ones and non aryans are the uncivilized by uncivilized we don't mean uneducated we mean those who are not civilized and in among the aryans the civilized one also there are two kinds of people the one who is righteous and one who are unrighteous and among the righteous uh, people also there are two kinds of people one who believe in fruitive activities one who do not believe in karma kanda and among the people who believe in karma kanda also there are two kinds of people some who constantly keep doing something good sometime good sometime bad and there are some who are in search of absolute truth now in those who are searching absolute truth also truth also there are two kinds of people some who want moksha some who does not want moksha does not want moksha there are three kinds of people there are some who want to worship demigods and there are some who want to have mystic powers and then there are some who believe in krishna now those who believe in krishna there also there are two kinds of people some who want to go back to goloka vrindavan and some who don't want to go back to goloka vrindavan they believe krishna is god but they worship krishna for um with the what is that um, karma mishrita bhakti or gnana mishrita bhakti now among those who want to go back to goloka vrindavan also there are two kinds of people somebody who want to go but not now take it easy and somebody wants to go now right now and is very seriously pursuing it and one such person that we all have come in touch is abhay charnaravind bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupada in our life now you can imagine how rare it is if you go through all those divisions to get that one devotee in your life who is a devotee of krishna and who wants to go back to back home back to godhead that is why you see in shrimad bhagavatam 11.2.29 there is a beautiful verse dullabha manava deho dehinam shanabhangura tatrapi dullabham manye vaikuntha priyadarshanam oh it's very rare to get a human birth but more rare most rare in human birth is to get an association of vaikuntha priya one who is dear to lord vaikuntha priyadarshanam a devotee of the uh, lord so here durlabha manava janma govinda das kaviraj is saying oh it's very rare to get a human birth okay i'm convinced it's very rare to get human birth so what should i do so he says the next word satsanga come on just do satsanga what is satsanga so satsanga is he says sat means eternal sanga means associate with those people who are talking about that eternal absolute truth the supreme personality of godhead lord shri krishna so such a beautiful way he is explaining that oh my dear mind take shelter of the son of nanda maharaj and then you will become fearless because this human birth is very rare and in this human birth durlabha manava janma what you should do you should take shelter of him and how by doing satsanga you should take association of devotees satsanga we are doing we associate with devotees but there is a problem here also our situation is like that of a of somebody who was drowning in the water and then he was trying to somehow swim and then again getting in inside the water somehow again coming out panting becoming breathless and somehow was trying to cross this material ocean and somebody very kindly who was in the boat gave us a hand and made us sit inside the boat shila prabhupada of course so he made us you know he took our hand we were drowning in this material ocean and he took our hand and he took us by his by our hand and made us sit in this boat that is iskon and he is the captain of our uh, of our boat and then there are other crew members other devotees whom we are associating with and it's very comfortable there is this boat there is this captain there is this 
there is this you know tool is khan you know everything is in place and you know we are in constant association but there is another problem here what is happening is we are becoming too comfortable in the boat nice breeze is blowing wonderful association of devotees the kachoris and sunday feast is smelling so good and the hot puris and halwas what's the hurry to go back home back to godhead it's comfortable the boat is comfortable the breeze is nice and instead of hurrying up to go quickly back home back to godhead we are like let's turn a little right and then little left and it looks nice the view is nice and the hills view is nice everything is looking so cool and good so that is why govinda das kaviraj he gives us next para of his bhajan he says come on don't get so comfortable don't lose your enthusiasm and dis- determination nischaya dhairya you have to uh, you know utsaha you have to be very quick you know we have to go back home back to god in this life otherwise our mentality is krishna is permanent and anyway the soul doesn't die says the second chapter of bhagavad gita so we are permanent he is permanent what's the hurry we can we can just take our own time so then he comes to his next paragraph he says um, सीत आतप बात बरीशन ए दिन जामिनी जागिरे हे मैन डोंट गेट सो कंफर्टेबल सीत आतप आतप यू आर थिंकिंग यू आर इन द बोट एंड एवरीथिंग इज वेरी कंफर्टेबल बट इट्स गोइंग टू बी हॉट इट्स गोइंग टू बी कोल्ड इट मे रेन देर बी सो मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स हियर इट्स नॉट वेरी कंफर्टेबल मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज दुखालयम अशाश्वतम नो बडी कैन गेट कंफर्टेबल एंड नो बडी कैन बी हैप्पी इन दिस वर्ल्ड शीता तप भात भरी सन ए दिन जामिनी झाकी रे दर इज ही दर इज कोल्ड दर इज रेन दर इज नो परमानेंट हैप्पीनेस हियर एंड वी आर सींग दैट एंड वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दैट दर इज करोना एंड देन दर इज समाइम साइक्लोन एंड समाइम हरी केन एंड समाइम दिस और समाइम दैट एंड आदि देविक और आध्यात्मिक आदि भौतिक वी कीप ऑन सफरिंग from some or the other miseries either some people are giving us trouble or our body is giving us trouble or the nature is giving us trouble there is always trouble so he's trying to make the point oh there is no one is happy here you know see the heart of about the barishana and what and okay even if you want to stay back in this world what are you want what do you want to do he says in the next line what you are doing बिफले से विनो कृपा न दुर्जना चपल सुखल भला गिरे यू आर वेस्टिंग योर टाइम इन सर्विंग टू काइंड ऑफ पीपल हु आर देर बिफले से विनो अननेसेसरी सर्विंग पीपल हु आर देर कृपा न दुर्जना सिंफुल पीपल एंड माइजरली पीपल ना विल से वॉट इज दैट हु इज माइजरली हियर एंड हु इज सिंफुल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ दुर्जना वॉट इज इट मीन बाई दुर्जना I don't see anybody durjana my neighbors are very nice actually they're very good hearted and nice people no 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 here durjana means if somebody is not using their senses in service of krishna is a durjan wicked person is a sinful person we may say but how can you say that just because he's not serving krishna you will call him wicked but he's nice he is nice to his wife and he's nice to his children okay sir but here's a problem the, the thing is if you take somebody's property and then you don't give it back without his permission and you don't give back anything to him definitely you are a wicked person so you may say but what did i take i didn't take anybody's anything no you took because you are taking the you are using the sun's rays sun, sunlight that is krishna's and you are breathing air that is krishna's and you are drinking water and that is krishna's and you are walking on this planet earth and that is krishna's and whatever is given to you it is krishna's and you are using it but you're using it for yourself and you're not using it for krishna so you are a wicked person durjana you are a miser krishna gave you so much and so much and you're just putting it in the locker and you don't want to give anything hmm? like um, what is that prabhupad told bhakti charu maharaj oh you have given so many lives for maya why don't you give this one life for krishna so we just you know we taking something from krishna and then we are not giving anything back to him and we just keeping want to keep it for ourselves miser so these these this is our quality these are our qualities so he said bifal is say we know kripa na durjana yes we, we are like this and we are serving people who are like that kripa na and durjana why why are we doing that for what chapal sukha lab lagire because you are tempted you are thinking i'll get uh, happiness but let me warn you dear sir says govindadas kaviraj chapal sukha 
oh you you are you going to get something very uh, fleeting very very small and fleeting chappalo just like him somebody is in the desert and he is walking with lot of hard work and somehow somehow he reaches you know a place where he'll get water and finally he gets one drop of water then is it worth it working so hard just for a drop of water and that also it may evaporate any moment by the time it it, it comes on your palm and it is gone you know just a drop of water chapala sukhala bhala gire just for that you are going on serving kripa na durjana you are serving people who are wicked because they are not serving krishna and those who are my sir there is one um, beautiful verse in shrimad bhagavatam <coughs> canto 2 chapter 3 verse number 19 very interesting verse it says that if we are praising them who are not hearing the transcendental pastimes of krishna then you are that's what bhagavatam says i'm not saying this so then you are dog you are a hog you are a camel and you are an ass that's what it says but we are doing it on regular basis we are serving people who are not devotees you know and we are praising them also because it's our job they are our boss so they are our seniors so then you are a dog you are a hog why why you are a dog because dog has to wag its tail to the master because master provides uh, food so that's what we are doing wagging our tails to materialistic people and then we are like hogs why because hogs they eat without discrimination they eat anything and everything whatever they get and people are becoming in this world like hogs just you're just about eating anything anything that has life they are ready to cut and eat it and then they are like camels camels they eat thorns and while they are chewing the thorns that their, their tongue is hurt and blood comes out and they think wow the thorns are sweet but basically they are just tasting their own blood this is what people around in the world are doing drinking and smoking and they think that's making them happy but it's actually they're they're just sucking their own blood they're, they're killing themselves and then asses what the ass the donkey does the donkey just works very hard for nothing you know it can actually you know without even working for the uh, washer man it can have all the grass but it still works and i, I especially like that um, example where shila prabhupad says how in india in those days they used to make the donkeys walk they put a stick on the head of the donkey and then there is a carrot um, hanging on the stick and the donkey is assuming that you know if i move a little forward and i can actually get hold of that carrot and i'm going to eat it but because it's put in such a way that even if the donkey keeps walking keeps walking it'll never get the carrot and then when it reaches the destination finally the laundry man will give the donkey the carrot to eat and that's what is our life you know every time we think oh, just a little bit and i think i'm going to be settled and everything will be fine and uh, then i'll dedicate my life um, completely to krishna and completely to iskon and completely to service and i've been hearing like this from so many people for last 20 years but that day never came the carrot is still you know very far for them so um <clears throat> this is what is happening dog hog yeah <laughs> thank you for that picture <laughs> the dog hog and camel and horse camel and ass but of course the vaishnava acharya say we can become a dog and we can become a hog and we can become a camel and we can become a donkey for our uh, guru and krishna we can do that just like a dog is so loyal to its master we can be loyal to shila prabhupad can be loyal to shri krishna just like a dog barks if somebody disturbs the master we should bark for shila prabhupad i like that um, bhajan of um, bhakti vinod you know, thakur one of my favorite bhajan he says um sarvasva to mar charane sampiya pudichi to mar ghare tumi to thakur to mar kukur boliya jana ho more boliya jana ho more Oh uh you are my master and I'm your dog and uh, when you introduce me to anybody don't tell them my name tell them here is my dog this is my dog so that's how I want to serve guru and gauranga that's how I want to serve the vaishnavas 
and i thought that is so beautiful so yes we can become dog of shila prabhupa we can become dog of krishna and bark you know if anybody is disturbing or bringing obstacles in shila prabhupa's uh, mission we can become a camel just like a camel stores water in the hump and whenever there is scarcity of water it it just you know takes the water from there similarly we can store all the good lessons that we learn and all the verses of bhagavatam and bhagavad gita and and then whenever there is scarcity and we're not able to get association of devotees we just draw from there and we can become a donkey just like a donkey works so hard we can also work hard for krishna come out of our comfort zone and stretch ourselves beyond our capacity to serve uh, guru and gauranga we can become a hog just like hog hog has a very very powerful senses and it can you know just about smell anything from whatever distance so we can also use our senses in serving krishna and then in, you know and then we can actually become the dog hog camel and ass for uh, krishna service so bifal is say we know kripana durjana chapala sukhala balagi re oh why do you want to serve this wicked and miserly people for just that little sukha that's what govinda das <coughs> kaviraj says now somebody may argue uh, uh, sir uh, you are you you you're talking too much sir that there but but i i'm frankly telling you i am very happy maybe you are talking about general mass of people who have so many problems in life but my life is very comfortable i am retired one son in america one son in london life is so beautiful happy um uh, everything is fine in my life so he comes up with his third para ईधन यौवन पुत्र परिजन इते की आछे परती तीरे इस इज नो नो माय डियर सर यू आर मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग ईधन यौवन पुत्र परिजन दिस ऑल फ्लीटिंग हाउ दिस इज ऑल इज जस्ट लाइक ए इट्स लाइक ए यू नो लाइफ इज टॉटरिंग लाइक अ ड्रॉप ऑफ वाटर ऑन अ लोटस पेटल यू नो समटाइम्स वी सी द ड्यू ड्रॉप्स ऑन द लोटस पेटल एनी टाइम दे मे जस्ट फॉल इट विल नॉट स्टे इट विल नॉट स्टे परमानेंटली इट विल जस्ट गो यू नो इट इज इज मूविंग फ्लीटिंग so this is my dear sir no e dhana this money will not help you it's not going to stay permanently with you yobana oh this youth and this beauty it will not stay with you putra parijana oh your family members oh, they will not and many of us would actually practically experience it during corona nothing was helping neither good contacts was helping neither money was helping neither nothing was helping and they you know even if you had a very good healthy body you have done exercise every single day there were people who were still dying and then of course there were some people who maybe didn't have the right contacts but then they somehow survived so we we could really understand that actually it's everything is in krishna's hand you know we can't do anything so nothing could help us at that time ite ki ache parati tire kamala dala jala just like the lotus uh, flower you know on the on the petals of lotus flower jivana tala mala oh it's you know we, it's fleeting we never know what's going to happen bhajahu haripada nitire oh i'm giving you very good advice my dear sir please surrender to krishna bhajahu haripada one thing is there whether we do it voluntarily you know i mean like giving up uh, you know unnecessary attachments or the time will uh, forcibly take it from us choice is ours but we'll have to give up give up we have to whether we do it voluntarily or we are forced to do it i'm just reminded of this monkeys in vrindavan there was this one monkey who just got into somebody's room in vrindavan and he got some nice peanuts now those peanuts were inside a small pot now you know how the mouth of the pot is actually small mouth he got his hand inside got the nuts but when he wanted to bring out the hand it's not coming out it went inside because at that time there was nothing in the hand but when he's trying to bring it out you know it's a fist because he has to hold the nuts and now it's not coming out and he was yelling oh my hand is stuck to so the other friend monkeys they came and they said oh, we'll help you just open the fist leave the nuts and your hand will easily come out and he said how can i do that i don't want to i want them also and i don't want and i want my hand should come out he said that is not possible this is what we want we i want everybody and i want krishna also but that is not possible <laughs> you have to give it up so if you if you you either voluntarily give it up or forcibly it will go away from you because nothing is permanent in this world whether it's your putra parijana dhana money 
youthful body everything is uh, temporary so now govinda das kaviraj has told us okay worship the son of nanda all this um, happiness is temporary and uh, you know bhaja hu hari pada niti re so now we may say but everything is very um, tempting you know you i mean i be able to understand whatever you are saying dear sir but it's still you know whole situation is very tempting tempting so what should we do how to remove this temptation so then he gives his uh, next para he says shravana kirtana smarana vandana pada sevana dasyare pujana sakhi jana atmani vedana govind das abhilashare so he says yeah because this process of bhakti is not only <clears throat> emptying the mind the process of bhakti is not only emptying the mind of temptation but is also the process of um you know driving the temptation out by crowding the mind that means bhakti is not only that you empty your mind of all desires but bhakti is also you crowd your mind with krishna service that's how bhakti works it's not only saying no to temptation it's also saying yes to krishna and both have to go parallelly you say only if you keep on saying no 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 it doesn't work you have to fill it up again with with krishna bhakti with krishna's service suppose if there is this this room and we want to you know vacuum we want to create okay now we may try with different machines but still if there is some gap underneath the door or window again some air may come inside but one good way of doing it is if you fill it up with water then there is no place for air so similarly if we fill up our life with shravana kirtana smarana vandana then there is no place for temptation so he is giving us a tip how to go about it how we can save ourselves from temptation when we <clears throat> engage our mind our senses shravana we hear about krishna kirtana we talk about krishna smarana we remember krishna pada sevana we serve krishna and his devotees dasya we serve the devotees we serve krishna pujana we worship him sakhi jana we develop a relationship with him atmanivedana we surrender to him govinda das abhilashare that's govinda das tip to us that is what he is also craving now we may say well, i understand all this thing but i don't have determination where do i get the determination from to do this but the acharya say actually we have determination there is nobody in this world who does not have determination every time people ask this question how should i get determination no you don't have to get it everybody has it what we don't have or rather what we lack is direction for our determination i'll give you an example we say we don't have determination to give up sense gratification but even to indulge in sense gratification you need determination even to indulge in sense gratification you need determination is it not somebody is drinking alcohol he has to have such a determination to continue even though he is falling sick and his health is becoming bad and he got so many times into accidents because of drinking and driving but he still drinks the next day what a determination yeah. so everybody has determination see what kind of determination all of us have we been hearing classes regularly and we have been you know <clears throat> been told continuously in the in the classes that you know the goal of our life is to go back home back to god and not to indulge in uh, material materialism but we still have so much determination to still continue our material life so yeah determination we have whether we good or bad it's just that we need to direct that determination in the right way what is what is lacking is the direction to determination determination we have when we have a purpose then determination will become strong for example sometimes you know during exams children are so attracted to browse the net they want to watch some movie they want to do so many things but they know no tomorrow is my exam so i'm not going to do it 
but one thing can be done <coughs> you can delay the uh, temptation sometimes denying is not possible but you can delay the temptation okay today i will not watch but tomorrow and what happens if you delay will come come to that later so determination comes when we have a specific purpose and nobody lacks determination only thing is we have to give direction to our determination if we give a certain purpose to our life then our determination will become uh, strong so uh, how should we increase that uh, determination or rather where should we get direction for that determination direction for determination comes from uh, guru sadhu and shastra if we are reading scriptures like we just read durlabh manava janma then we oh we get more serious oh this human life is very rare i should become serious so when we again and again study scriptures and we again and again hear then we get certain direction to of our <coughs> determination what we need to do actually is um, there are two things in our life we can do one is to create blockers between us and maya and one is to create pushers between us and krishna blockers between us and maya is <clears throat> somehow or the other decrease the exposure towards the things which agitate us you know you know and uh, tempt us and even if we are forced to such exposure at least try to delay the um, delay that temptation instead of denying it if we, if you tell our mind no you're not going to get it then mind will not accept because we are a, we are made in such a way creatures we are pleasure seeking we want pleasure without pleasure we cannot survive only thing we can do is we can deny we can delay it that means if we are if we want to indulge in something which is not you know uh, which is not recommended for our spiritual progress and if we say to our mind no you cannot then it will it will revolt but you can say not today tomorrow or, or okay not now after the, after one week something like that if and, and mind will get convinced you know and then if you delay it then that um, um, the the uh, urge you know which is very uh, tivra was very very ha- very uh, sharp uh, it will slowly become a little blunt because you have delayed it you have delayed it you know um, you know many times uh, you know when i'm preaching here to the devotees so they are you know getting serious in krishna consciousness and then you ask them you know, start wearing kanti they'll say mother ji today is not a good day i'll wear on vaikuntha ekadashi so what they're trying to do is actually delay krishna consciousness but ready now you are in the right mood just go ahead and take a step and then i tell them no no today is only good day now only you wear it ask them to take some vows or ask them not today i'll do it on sunday shall i do it our mind is you know is trying to delay so i keep telling them no no do it now right now when the good thought has come just now do it finish it up and then i tell them on contrary whenever an adverse thought comes that you delay suppose you want to see a movie okay it may not be krishna conscious then you tell your mind okay i'll see you tell your otherwise mind will fight don't say i'll not see no definitely i'll see i'll see on a good day let me see of a good day in the calendar when should i see that movie and then you mark it up and then slowly by that time the moods will change because sometimes we are in sattva sometimes we are in rajas sometimes we are in tamas and we keep jumping between the moods or sometimes when the rajas becomes very high then we are tempted we want to do something which may not be uh, conducive for our krishna consciousness so we can't deny we can say we'll do it not now let's mark it in the calendar on this day i'll do it on this day i'll indulge in it and then by that time your moods will change and then you know it it will become less agitating so this is one thing we can do so these are like blockers blockers between us and maya you know even associating with devotees these are like blockers you really want to indulge in something but what to do you know devotees association they are not leaving you if you don't go on a sunday program and they don't see you in the zoom hey prabhu why didn't you join for the class you know they are constantly reminding us or sending prasadam we are mixing with them talking meeting going on yeah these are all these are all blockers even if we are attracted towards maya there's somebody coming between us and 
Maya. So we should always try and make sure that there are lots of <coughs> blockers <coughs> between us and Maya. And associate with the right people. That's very important. See, um, one of the biggest challenge or one of the biggest discouragement in our life is um, when we mix with people whose definition of success is different from our definition of success, especially when we associate with materialistic people. Their definition of success is money, position, whereas a devotee's definition of success is different. But when we are in friendship with them, then we'll be frustrated completely because their definition is different. Their definition of success is different. And then slowly we get uh, allude. So this is one thing. We should create um, blockers by associating with the right pe people. <clears throat> See, the best way to deal with temptation is to not deal with it. The best way to deal with the temptation is to not deal with it. Because the more you deal with it, it will grab you. So the, 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 the best thing to do is uh, delay it. If you too much ponder over it, you know, shall I do it, not, not, no, you, you, you uh, make a decision. Yes, I will indulge, but not now. Just delay the process and slowly it with her away. And the other thing we can do is push ourselves towards Krishna. And that pushing will happen when we do Shavanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam. Then whether we like it or we don't like it, we are forcibly pushed towards Krishna. So this is what uh, Govinda Das Kaviraj says. <clears throat> worship my, oh my mind, worship Lord Shri Krishna, take his shelter. This world is temporary and you are looking for serving this wicked and miserly people. But whatever you get out of it is fleeting and... Um, and this world is temporary and the only thing that can give you happiness is serving Krishna. And how do you serve? By Shravanam Kirtanam. So here he tells us the problem and he also gives us solution in the end. That do Shravanam and Kirtanam and then you can go back home, back to God and happily. So with this, I'll end it here uh, by praying for all of us that Guru and Gauranga blesses us this coming uh, new year, calendar year 2022 and then we can say no to temptations and we get the strength to say yes to Krishna and then we take shelter of the son of Nanda Maharaj and we employ our body, mind and senses in service of Krishna in the way they like it and that we get association of devotees which is so rare in this world you know, and that we increase our taste in chanting the holy name and we serve the Vaishnavas and we get opportunity to see Leela Sthalis of Lord and then we can have a blissful mm, Krishna conscious uh, 2022 year ahead. Thank you so much. Jagat Guru, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Jai, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Okay, so what I understand your Hare Krishna. Okay, what I understand your question is that even if we want to move ahead in Krishna consciousness in our life, we may not get so much encouragement. Sometimes the people in our house are of different opinions. So how do we progress? <coughs> we don't have control over uh, anybody. Only thing that we can have control is our own self. So bloom where you are planted, whatever situation that Krishna has put us into, uh, whatever possible from that particular situation is that is what we should try to do. Even the gopis were put in trouble. They didn't have family members cooperating, but they still uh, uh, went on to become the greatest devotees of the Lord. So yes, uh, we are put in different situations, but one thing we can be sure of is that Krishna knows what it takes to bring us close to him. So if he has put us in this situation, maybe this is what we require to become more close to him. Sometimes we see some devotees have such wonderful family who are husband is devotee and children are devotee and everybody is devotee and so encouraging. So maybe that is a situation they require to become close to Krishna. 
and sometimes we are put in a situation where nobody is supporting us but maybe that is a situation we require to become close to krishna if we would have been given some other situation maybe we would have become little lazy so krishna knows rightly what we require to become devotees so whatever situation that he has put in from there on whatever is possible we should do the whole point is it's not about the quantity how much it's about um it's about how much you are um you know the best of your capacity it's not in comparison with anybody else it's in comparison with your own self so in the given situation what best you can do you should do sometimes people think surrender means okay maybe i just surrender my family or i, I just give up my hair i just wear a cloth in dress of renunciate i move into the temple i give up everything actually surrender means wherever whatever situation that krishna has put you in from there you try to do your 100% so if you are put in a family where there is nobody who is supporting you in krishna consciousness and you are all alone well, that's all right so whatever situation that you are put in you take it as krishna's mercy and in that given situation whatever is possible so if they are not supporting still nobody has control over your um, you know your tongue you can always wag it you can always move it and chant krishna's name and nobody stopping if you are have you know food in your on your plate you can always you know in your mind offer it to krishna and you can chant krishna's name and the fact that you are here in this uh, zoom class that means you are allowed to hear so when you have a situation where you are allowed to hear and you are allowed to chant and you take krishna's prasad then whatever association possible nowadays everything is it's, it's such a boon actually with the zoom and all otherwise there were times when uh, it's so difficult to have devotee association unless and until you go to the temple and associate now it's all possible online and then even if that is not possible there are things available on youtube and different f- social um, uh, media so there is so much so there's there's no issue at all that's it whatever situation you are in you try your best and and will progress because everybody is different what works for you may not work for me what works for me may not work for you your shoes don't fit me my shoes don't fit you so uh, whatever we may assume a oh, idealistic family ideal life wish i i had that kind of life it will never going to happen we are all having different sets of karmas and we are carrying so much baggage from our previous life what we can simply be grateful is that in whatever situation still krishna allowed us to connect to the devotees and the right parampara and we know krishna is supreme personality of god wow and that and, and we and we have shila prabhupad books and we have shila prabhupad in our life and um, hi krishna okay my audible now okay <clears throat> no no it's i'm sorry actually it's from my side there's some net issue internet issue okay i just lost the track i was saying that yeah so somehow or the other we should get uh, connected to krishna in whatever situation that uh, krishna has put us into okay can you see me yeah so it's a nice question and uh, that is one which has been asked regularly i've given one class on chanting and how to improve on chanting it's called do you have salt in your chanting if you like you can go through that class but in short i would say that um, if we because we have mind it will definitely wander and uh, the whole process is we keep on struggling to chant and that's what krishna will appreciate and it's not that uh, if we struggle 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 and one day our chanting will be completely pure but krishna will see our struggle and he may he may reward us that's the hope so we need to keep struggling and we can we can take short steps at a times so that means even if our whole 16 rounds doesn't go that great what we can start doing is okay i'm just going to chant one round perfectly today let me see how it works and then you keep on improving even if not one round you can even start with i'll do just five mantras perfectly five times hari krishna perfectly and i'm going to hear each one and do it nicely and like that you can practice it for a few days and then keep uh, uh, increasing and uh, that's the whole uh, that's the whole process just like the pilot when is driving the plane the plane is almost all the time going this way and that way <clears> that <throat> the whole point is it again brings it back to track so the mind is going to go here and there but the whole point is we be conscious that it's going here and there and again we try to bring it back and that will keep going and that's what is going to happen so it's like those boxing game you know you box with maya you wrestle with maya and then you fall down and then again the referee you know he whistles and then you again get up so this is what happens 
you know guru and krishna they they whistle they whistle and then with with their katha and you know shila prabhupada you know come on get up and then we again get up and fight with maya and then we again get up and fight with maya and that's the whole process but the good part is at the end the referee decides <clears throat> who is the winner so that referee is krishna and at the end we never know maybe he'll decide we are the winners if he sees that we are continuously struggling and trying and maybe he will just lift our hand and say here is the winner of the after the 16th round so we can keep trying yeah okay the question is the parents are forcing to go into materialistic association what to do hmm. so you have to internally immunize okay am i audible am i audible okay so you yeah i think i'm okay we have to internally immunize yourself what can be done sometimes you are exposed to situations even if you don't want to so you have to because parents um, you see it's it depends again i don't know what's your age and what situation you are in but whatever it is uh, you have to follow your parents and if they are taking you somewhere you'll have to go only thing is internally you can you know immunize yourself so even if you are in materialistic association it will not affect you if you have taken your vaccination as you chant hari krishna properly you do your hearing and reading and uh, even though you take it as an opportunity you see everything can be taken positively even if they are taking you in materialistic association you can make that association spiritual make friends there and then talk about uh, krishna if it's possible and sometimes preaching is not only talking about krishna preaching is also about how do you talk walk behave and carry yourself it inspires people you know if we are uh, nice human beings even that will be such an inspiration because nowadays even nice human beings have become rare in this world so if we are nice to people and we carry ourselves nicely and you know we are kind and compassionate and that makes an impact that is also one kind of a preaching because krishna's devotees are like that they are sweet like krishna and their and their presence makes everybody happy you should take it positively because you are chanting and maybe i don't know if you are wearing kanti i'm just assuming you may be wearing some kanti or something or you can put a little small small tilak sometimes sometimes even i am put in certain situations where you know complete tilak and of course now it's different but 10 15 years ago when i started some other projects and all it was sometimes it's difficult so just put a little little bit but over a period of time see you should take it in such a way that oh you are giving them association Now, many times i tell in my classes one is you know taking association one is giving association so when you go in this materialistic association you you don't take you give your association so you talk in about krishna and even if you can't talk about krishna you just be nice when they see a f- face of a devotee you are a devotee and uh, they are they are they are, they are benefited they are seeing a version of like you so this is also preaching preaching all is not always about talking even if you keep your mouth shut the fact that you are a devotee so you go there and they see your kanti or they see your tilak and uh, they appreciate you they are appreciating a vaishnava indirectly they are getting agyata sukruti so you take it like that oh this is also one kind of preaching that i am doing so there are so many ways uh, you know to take it so take it very positively since uh, you are forced by your parents and that will make them happy but if you um, if you please your parents that is also preaching otherwise they will become averse to krishna consciousness that my child does not listen to me because he is so called now krishna's devotee So no Krishna's devotees are ideal in everything they are ideal son and their ideal daughter and ideal wife and ideal mother they are ideal so and that inspires people so you can take it like that so be a nice son and or a nice daughter i don't know who and uh, please them by going there and nobody can take krishna away from your heart so when you are see like when you are exposed i understand because we spoke about not to expose ourselves uh, too much to materialistic otherwise we'll get carried away but you are put in such a situation so make your self strong inside chant more extra rounds and when you're going for those association here some more class and you know try to immunize yourself before walking in there and wear your mask that means don't take their association and then sanitize yourself that's it sanitize yourself with uh, krishna bhakti 
So sanitize and wear mask and uh, increase your uh, regular immunity. If you know every day you are taking, uh, um, you know, giloy and what is that, you know, some kasayam and turmeric and, you know, you become healthy. So every day if you are doing regularly hearing, reading, chanting, hearing, reading, chanting, these random metal associations can't do anything to you. Okay. Okay, now you have you have asked me two questions and <clears throat> as per our condition, I'll try to answer as briefly as possible, don't mind. Um, I'm just reminded of those lions and or tigers, the wild animals who are trained in the circus. They're so wild and they roar, but um, the, they have a very unique way of training them, you know. Initially, they just keep them starving and when they're not given food, they roar more louder. And they are still not given food. They roar even more louder. You know, everybody will shiver. And they are still not given food. And they roar louder. And they are still not given food. But now they don't have strength to roar. And the roaring becomes less. And the roaring becomes less. And the roaring becomes less. And then the uh, circus master says, Yes, now I give you this only if you jump through this ring and then jump like this and then do this. And then he throws a piece of meat. And that way he just, you know, um, captures or just uh, trains or tames the lion. That's with our mind. You know, it will roar if you don't give it what it wants. And it will roar louder. Because you know what your mind will say? If you delay, I'll keep on disturbing you. You better do it now then I'll not disturb you. That's a promise it makes. But the moment you indulge, then another new thing will come up and then another new thing will come up. So let it roar and let it, you know, roar louder. You don't care. And slowly the roaring will become less. And regarding the struggle, yeah, it'll keep, it'll go on happen, happening. I mean, I mean, you know, we even studied for our exams, right, in our school and college. Now, tell me how many things we remember during the time of exams. There are always some things we'll forget while we are writing the test. Whereas we have studied the whole chapter, but we still forget some points. And there, that's why there, you know, in our school we have class test, and then we have unit test, and then we have quarterly, and then we have half yearly, and then we have a final exams. So by the time the chapter is revised so many times when it comes to the final, so that's what will happen in our life also we will be doing something and then we will forget this time we forgot five things but next time we will forget only two and the next time we will forget only one thing and then maybe at one point in our life we will not forget anything that we have heard in the class so that's a continuous process you know yeah okay next question okay so there are three things here now okay so hmm, let me see um, uh, my memory is not so good so what you said is that um, yeah sometimes um, sometimes you are you are feeling very highly connected and sometimes you are not yeah because it is uh, connected with so many other things you know um, it, uh, like it always, you know, it all depends upon what you did the whole week. So many other things, the way you spent your time, that's how that will define your chanting. So sometimes when our reading and hearing and associating and what we are eating, the prasadam, everything is right, then, you know, chanting will happen right. When there is somewhere some little uh, difference in the equation there, <clears throat> then the result also comes in different way. So it all depends upon the other things because chanting is not something in isolation. There is, it is all connected. Who, who, what kind of people did you associate with, and what kind of you know atmosphere you were, what you were reading? And your second question was: Sometimes I feel when I have time, should I read Gita or should I read Bhagavatam or should I chant? Should I hear Kirtan? What should I do? Okay, now now this is Shravana, Kirtana, Smarana, Vandana. There are nine types of bhakti. So what? What makes you more connected to Krishna? Do that. It's not that because somebody said, you know, uh, you know, chanting is more superior than reading or hearing is more superior than this or that is more superior than that. What is connecting you? You know yours. You know yourself. So, you know what you are inclined to. What, uh, um, <clears throat> what um, you know, makes you feel more connected to Krishna? Do that. You know, see, like I've seen some devotees. 
for them memorizing verses is what makes them feel more connected to Krishna. And for some, just hearing bhajans. And for some, any day hearing class or in a, whatever they are in mood. If they hear class, they're happy. And for some, reading any day. If they just read, they're happy. And for some, dancing in kirtan. Oh, they'll be completely in ecstasy. So what is I know, uh, making you feel close to Krishna, pick it up for yourself. There are a variety of choice on the menu and, you know, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. There are lots of choices. And regarding your uh, birthday, uh, Shri Krishna Matirastu, Shri Krishna Shubhamastu, Shri Krishna Bhakti Praptirastu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hmm. <clears throat> so, we spoke about it, right, at the end of the class that the most uh, discouraging thing in Krishna consciousness is when we associate with the people whose definition of success is different from our definition of success. So when we associate with them, definitely they will criticize us because we are not as successful as they are uh, materially. So that's why we should uh, try and associate with uh, you know people, what Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Rupa Goswami says, you know, Snigdha, uh, those who are you know having the same taste, same aspirations, we should try and associate with them. And as far as coming with uh, them, um, that's it. If you if you associate more with devotees and you are clear with your goals, don't mind so much what they are uh, saying. Take it as a child's word. Sometimes, you know, children, they say so many things, but uh, the parents, they don't mind. They take it, you know, as uh, fun, you know. Sometimes, I don't know if you are married and you have children or if you have your brother's children or sister's children. Sometimes they'll come and they'll pull your beard and they'll tell you so many things, you know. But you don't mind, you know, even if they say you are like this or, you know, what, you'll, you'll not mind it. Similarly, when we deal with the uh, other people, we should take it like that because they don't know what's the goal of life. So, it's, you know... Um, yeah, because they, they don't know what's the goal of life and we should not take them so seriously. If the fact that if you're taking them seriously, that means, um, you know, for them, they are, for, for you, they are important people. So, you know, you're giving importance to them and you're giving importance to self. So, you should take it in, in different ways. One is that you don't give them importance. Second is if they're saying something, you take it humbly. It's good now if they keep on poking you, you'll become humble. Because, you know, we need also somebody to keep on telling us something that will keep us in humble state of mind. And take more association of devotees. Try to decrease the exposure. And you can't uh, answer everybody, you know, all the time. Every time you cannot be ready with some answer and, you know, defeat them. Some things you have to tolerate. Like every time I tell in my class, you know, there are only three choices. Either you, you tolerate or you mitigate, you know, or you migrate you are in that place and uh, you are not comfortable with that person just migrate get out get out from that place or you mitigate try to sort it out by giving him explanation no look this is not my priority and i am trying to be krishna conscious and this is what we are doing or you you know just tolerate it sometimes you just tolerate it depends upon what kind of situation that you are in you you take it if there's somebody who's your junior and you can explain, then this is a good opportunity. You can talk about Krishna with them, you know, and explain. If there's somebody who is beyond you, just tolerate it, you know, and leave it. The fact that sometimes you don't answer and ignore is also a very big uh, thing, you know, that you're not even worth the answer. So like that, it depends upon what kind of people you are dealing with. You know, you see where you can tolerate, you tolerate. Where you can answer, you answer or leave that place. And take less association of those kind of people. Inside, don't get affected. So many people will say so many things. Even Shishupal told Krishna hundred things, you know. I mean, he is a supreme personality of Godhead. And still Shishupal could find out hundred more than hundred faults in Krishna. And, uh, you know, and there are people, you know, in full in Bhagavatam, you will see how they, you know, uh, back and forth uh, criticize uh, devotees, is it not? But they had to tolerate so we are in this, uh, you know, in this kind, in, in this uh, situation in this world where um, all the wrong vices are uh, appreciated. Right? Today, if somebody is um, is very passionate, you know, they call him ambitious. Today, if somebody doesn't know how to speak and you know speaks very bluntly, then we say that um, he's very outspoken and smart. You know, so like that for every vice now they have given a good name in the in the in the society. You know. 
if somebody is um, not satisfied and goes on hankering for uh, you know more and more uh, material good they say he's so ambitious you know it's amazing what a quality such a passion for work you know and um, you know if he speak lie they say wow he's so diplomatic and you know if he's not well mannered they say wow he's straight forward you know doesn't keep anything in the heart so whatever you do you know all the vices now in this kali yuga is is uh, you know <clears throat> presented as good thing so what do you do this is a crazy world we are living in so uh, you know we'll always be looked at uh, as if you know uh, odd ones out so what can but that that does not mean that you know we we change our uh, stand you know what can be done i'm just reminded of one story um where it's already 9 o'clock how many more questions three yeah okay i'll skip that story ha huh? thank you okay no all, all will all will have its place you know in keep putting us in a particular uh, mood there is one verse in the bhagavatam now i'm not able to remember but um, what kind of food you eat what kind of people you associate what kind of uh, city you are living in what kind of scripture you are reading um, so many i think around 10 or 11 factors are there you know which will determine in what mode you will be so it's not only one single thing you know what kind of people you are associating also affects so food association place scripture everything everything you know gender so many things will affect you so whatever you know so like that but only thing is we should chant hari krishna and that will keep us in shuddha sattva okay next okay now i understand your question pavan prabhu you are saying that sometimes i give in to temptation and i do something which i'm not supposed to do but later on i regret and i feel bad about it what should i do it is very simple see we cannot always be perfect definitely will make mistake and um, but if you keep on thinking about that mistake and feel depressed then that is also not good for your krishna consciousness we should repent but that repentance should encourage us to continue in our krishna consciousness more fervently then that repentance is very good and healthy because it's encouraging you oh i did like that now i should chant more and you know but if that repentance is taking you away from krishna and putting you in depression then that is unhealthy so repentance should be there but just see what you do after repentance see we may fall you know in maya but between the falls what we are doing is important we cannot always be stable there will be always up and down in every devotee's life only thing is for some devotees sometimes the falls don't happen so frequently the the graph is you know one spike and then after a long time another spike and those who are maybe new in krishna consciousness there are continuous spikes but between the spikes what you do is very important so yes we fall but between the fall we should again try to rise and you know uh, think about krishna but if you keep on thinking about yourself then that is also not krishna consciousness because bhakti means to be krishna centered not self centered if you keep on thinking i am hopeless i am useless but what you are basically doing is you becoming self centered by going on thinking about yourself but the whole point is to think about krishna and be krishna conscious so don't think so much about it yes it happened now leave it there and start again thinking about okay now what next now let me just chant let me just you know let me just improve that's what because the whole point is krishna does not love us because of what we are krishna loves us because what he is he is not loving us because the what we are he loves us because he loves us he he is like that he is compassionate and he is merciful so his love for us is because of his quality not because of our quality and at no point of time it will be because of our quality because we can never come up to that level where krishna will love us because what we are he loves us because he is like that only he loves everybody so don't worry so much and always remember that you know no matter what we do we are not capable of doing something that will take krishna away from us he will never leave us but again that does not mean that we become over confident and start indulging in whatever because anyway mata ji said you know we are not capable of doing something that will take krishna away from us so i can do anything no we should be serious but you should not get into depression or something like that you should take it positively and move ahead okay are we done you know and you see so many devotees like that so 
Okay, in short, I understand your question is that uh, <clears throat> we see the devotees also suffer and the outsiders also suffer. So what is the difference? Partly you answered your question saying that sometimes so-called when you see some uh, so-called non-devotee not suffering, it may be because of some good karma that he must have done in his previous life. But again, to coming to your first part of question, we see devotees suffer and he also suffers. What's the difference? The only difference is... There are two patients in a in a in a hospital. Both of them are lying on two different beds, and both of them are suffering from uh, some kind of disease. But there is one person here who knows what disease he is suffering from, and the doctor has started the treatment. There is one person who is suffering, but has still not figured out what he is suffering from. So out of the two, this one is better because even though he is suffering. And he's, you know, yelling and crying in pain. But at least he knows what disease he's suffering from. And the treatment has started. So if not today, tomorrow, after a few months, he'll get cured. But this person doesn't even know uh, what he's suffering from. And why is he suffering also, he's not able to understand. And the treatment has not started. So devotees are always better off. So even though apparently we see sometimes uh, devotees suffering, so-called suffering. But what they're actually doing is that, you know, they're previous karmas are getting over or rather Krishna is purifying them, Krishna is making them more stronger. Whatever it is, Krishna, devotee is always under the jurisdiction of um, Krishna. And every time that uh, the suffering or whatever is happening, either it's Krishna trying to teach us, or make us more Krishna conscious or it's maybe some previous karma that we are getting done with. So we should be happy because after day comes night and after night comes day, nobody can stop night to come and nobody can stop day from coming. After every suffering, we know our our spiritual, our bank account which had all that uh, suffering in store is, uh, you know, we are withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing and one day it will become empty and then the good phase of our life will start. So it's a continuous um, process, good and then bad and then bad and then good. So it will go on. But to the, we should be happy that um, Krishna is uh, personally going through our treatment papers and uh, right treatment is going on and very soon uh, we'll be fine. Spiritual life, sometimes some things apparently don't seem very good in the beginning, but in the end result will be fine. We have to be, have uh, more patience. When the surgery happens, it looks painful only. You know, the doctor is cutting the stomach and removing the tumor, but the end everything will be fine. So yeah, we through, go through so many things and so many suffering, but at the end it will be fine. Metalistic people also go through so much suffering, but we don't even know what's going to happen because they have not even yet started the treatment. Okay, so I can go on and on, but I think I'll end it here. I think we're done now, Super Vilash Prabhu. We gave answers to everybody. Yeah, we did it. Okay. Thank you. Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rindu Ki Jai, Jagat Guru Shla Prabhupad Ki Jai. Thank you so much, all the devotees there at Tempa. Prabhu Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, 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 Nagi, Sab Krishna, 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 Nagi, Sab Krishna, Krishna. Krishna.